Hello, and welcome back. On this fireside episode, I want to give a quick talk on Israel and what the name means and who this term really applies to. So, let us begin with the word Israel. Israel is a name given to Jacob, Jacob, El, after he wrestled with the angel or messenger of God. It was never intended to be a land or a physical place, but rather a state of being of one who hath raised the holy atonement oil from within their own holy temples and have been sealed with the seal of God. Now, a physical template for a temple was given to the Hebrews we call the Jewish faith. These Jews are responsible for leaving Egypt, another name for the world or earth, and entering into a rest or a Sabbath that would allow them to raise their oil to heaven or the head, as the head is heaved upon the body as the highest place, or heaven is the head basically. Within the head is the gland that releases this oil substance that is magnetic and golden like honey in color, and the other polarity from the pineal gland is called clostrium and is a white milky fluid that together, composed, creates the cerebral spinal fluid. This physical temple in heaven is actually our brain, and its function with the holy tabernacle and mercy seat within the holy of holies or the pineal region are symbolic and important to understand in physiology and in our DNA. More on that later, but this is the literal Israel, that land that flows with milk and honey, is indeed your temple or your body that houses the spirit of the Father. Christ said, if you have seen me, then you have seen the Father. This raising of the Holy Christos oil unlocks dormant brain cells that increase neurons firing rate to a ridiculous amount over 6% faster than others with similar brain sizes. This creates more paths for neural networks and ultimately genetics are passed down, increasing brain size through generations, continuing the sacred practice handed down to the next generation in these families. This activates dormant brain cells and activates dormant regions of the brain making them highly intelligent as well as use of brain areas that are not normally used in logic. For example, Einstein's brain had unusually large developed areas that caused his analytical thinking to increase to amazing proportions. He was also known to practice raising the oil by refraining from sex at certain times, as well as Isaac Newton, Nikola Tesla, and even Elon Musk, as well as Epstein, used this process to increase intelligence. This information is withheld, and instead we are told Israel is a land that the Jews were given, and that is not true. Let us read in the history from the Jewish people themselves in the Old Testament. Clearly, we can see in the first temple, the knowledge of God dwelt in the first temple, from which is the information I shared above, that each body is the temple, and each can reach the state of Israel by raising the holy oil, in the Sabbath. Now the first temple was destroyed by Cyrus the Great after the Jewish people failed to keep the Sabbath or sealing of God's people in this method of raising the holy oil from within. For the writing was on the wall when Cyrus, named years ahead, would be the one to defeat Jerusalem in the time of the first temple. In the second temple in Jerusalem, the man walked in the temple who had raised his oil in the proper way we call Jesus the Christ. And they rejected his truth and crucified him in order to retain their power and control using this information that was meant for everyone to understand. They have hidden it within their faith and symbols and instead give us the great age of deception. These Jews who call themselves Jews are not really Jews as real Jews are the children of the Father and are the ones teaching this process in who each is saved from within by their own Christ Messiah written within their DNA code that they must unlock using unconditional love. 
Instead, the Jewish people now are occupiers, and really, the Roman Empire removed the Jewish people from Palestine around 70 AD for the last time. And once again, it is written in Leviticus the curses that would befall them for failing to follow the law and instructions. Today, that is their fate, and they are not to receive entry into the promise until they understand who they are. This has nothing to do with a physical land, but rather a state of being. A state of unconditional love for all of the creation. Instead, they remain committed to the unpardonable sin. The sin of rejecting the fact that they are God, and God is one in all people. There is only one man that fell and became many shattered pieces. The one is God. And there is nothing else. All are the Father. He plays all roles in all life. Now read the curses of Leviticus, as they are the plight of all Jews who disregard the law of God, the holy communion with the Spirit, and the sealing with the Sabbath. That is a period of rest, not a day of the week. It reads, They shall be a foreigner in a foreign land and a slave to those who will rule them. They will be fatherless, and another will raise their child. So much is true if you just read and understand, instead of buying into the propaganda of Israel being a homeland to a dead religion from a previous age that was polluted and perverted. In the synagogue today, we see child pedophilia, worse than anything the Catholic has committed. Just see the Jewish bathhouses, man-boy relationships, and requirements for priesthood. Go research it and see for yourself. We don't realize just how bad the people of Israel are towards the natives that are just defending their land that has been stolen by a people that now committed genocide once again in the name of their gods in which I do not know. I only know the one God that is Israel. Here, Israel, your God is one God playing all the roles in every human life and all life you see. It is only God and nothing else. So when the Israeli murders the innocent, no, these are not of God, as God doesn't murder himself. Only those in ignorance do such things. Only those that do not know who they are committed sin against themselves. They have no right to claim to be Jewish or of Israel, for they have shown their fruits to be of ignorance. Now, know that this is the same techniques the Spartans used to occupy southern Greece. They enslaved the locals and became filthy rich. They were survivors of Atlantis, not Greeks, but whites of Poseidon, as the Greeks came from Zeus, one of the three sons of Noah who inherited the right to rule the earth, one-third each, and Hades was the third, or Japheth, Shem, and Ham, as we know them by our Bible. The three pyramids we see in Egypt on the meridian, the dividing point for the earth, represent their rule and dominion over earth. Shem produced a family called the Ashkenazi Jew, as all these families are white Caucasians and ruled civilization first. They are all Jewish, as all white people are from this family of Noah. The lost tribe of Dan is the people that rule the United States and Britain. The lost tribe, so to speak. But research it. Don't take my word for it. But let's stay on topic, and we will save that evidence for another day. But today, let's look at the name Jacob, for it means heal as he came out at birth grasping the heel of Esau, his brother. Later, Jacob, his name, that means God, is his protection, becomes Israel, or Holy One of God, or God preserves him. It means he has raised his oil, and he kept the Sabbath in the way it was meant to be kept. Now, see my video on the Sabbath and sealing of God's people we call Israel. It goes into more detail of this exact process and what it means to climb Jacob's ladder. Jacob means to come from being behind or to follow from being behind or to supplant or overreach. 
It comes from the word heal and God will protect. Heal like your foot heal. God sees us all as Jacob that needs to convert into Israel by raising the oil in the Sabbath. Now, this is critical to understand as it seals you into your understanding that unlocks from above a great knowledge that you will then understand this all. Now, no, the people we call Jews are not Jews, and the land of Israel is not a physical place. The ones we call Jews now are using this to gain power and control, playing the victim yet being occupiers over the world as the one world capital will be in Jerusalem. And there the president of the world will sit in a throne and blasphemy the true God and knowledge as they try to control others in service to themselves orientation. Now this is important to really understand. There in the third temple, the king will offer sacrifice again and control the entire world's population, bringing them into bondage and slavery again in service to self-orientation. The true Jewish people that are called Israel are of unconditional love, like the Christ was. They inherit the promise that was given to Sarah. Within your seed shall inherit the kingdom. So these people we call Jews now rejected that Christ. They murdered him and are using this process to control others by communism and false propaganda such as anti-Semitism and false historical accounting. The Bolshevik Revolution were these same Jewish people that were rejected by the Spirit for failing to follow the divine knowledge that was given them Instead, they corrupted the knowledge to control others. Just look at their track record on Russia with setting up the USSR. After the Bolshevik Revolution that murdered millions of Ukraine's innocents, that was once annexed as part of Russia, dividing the entire country from its families of Europe and out into isolation. Or look at China and how the CCP, or Chinese Communist Party, was founded on the same European ideas of a socialist society with democratic rights, claimed by the success of the Bolshevik Revolution, and once again are being controlled by this very elite family we call the Cabal, who are the only ones allowed to cut diamonds in New York, for example, and want their third temple constructed in Jerusalem to start sacrifice again of animals and man. Now, in In Genesis 3.15, we read, He will crush your head, and you will strike your heel. And I will put enmity between thee and thy woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise its heel. The serpent represents and brings knowledge of the raising of the Christ oil from within. This knowledge, or serpent, is like an enemy, and no one wants to hear it. He says, surely you will be like God, knowing right from wrong, or an ability to judge, basically. The fruit represents the orgasm, and having one. Learning to refrain from eating this fruit or orgasm is part of raising the oil. Few will be able to refrain from it. But doing so during the seed days is critical. It has to be avoided every month during the time The seed is birthed in the solar plexus when the moon enters your sun sign, only to be spent or used when bringing a new child into the world, and not for continuous pleasure, as this drains and destroys your life force. Enmity means having the characteristics of an enemy, that this knowledge would be like a poison and have the ability to destroy you. But it says the deception will be overcome and you will bruise thy heel. Again, this is the root word in etymology for Jacob. Yukab el. Jacob is bruised when he wrestled with the angel or the message. The message is accepted and his name changed to Israel. He understands the Sabbath and seal as he wrestled the angel in his sleep or in spirit on the Sabbath. He is sealed and a new name granted. He is now called of Israel. And so is all of our fates 
for none will be lost or left behind. The woman seed represents all mankind, and of course, we call this seed every month in our process of raising the oil. We look for that seed to ascend the spine from the sacral plexus. All men and women have this spiritual womb and ability to birth the Christ oil from the seed to ascend the spine and raising called the Immaculate Conception and birth from above. That takes place with a vision where the Christ will descend into the world by birth of a child, bringing the Christ into the world with every child born in flesh with the same creative seed energy. The process works in this way, so it's important to understand that this seed will fatally bruise thy head, meaning you will die to all your old knowledge and be rebirthed into the new knowledge of truth, or you will die the death of man again and again. That is all. All is God, and there is no judgment or right or wrong, as we learn to stop judging by cutting down the tree of knowledge and judgment, the tree of good and evil. Then from that stump, from within each temple, which is each and every human, the tree of life is grafted to the stump and provides you the food of eternal life, knowing that you are God in so many forms, always self-aware, even without a body, or your greatness and glory that you adorned yourself with before time existed. You don't need a body to be self-aware. Remember, you are just wearing this body. And it's not who you really are. Just the role you agreed to play and the body you agreed to die in and for. Only you will love and die for your body. So love you always. This is the knowledge you have been seeking and is now granted in this new age that is upon us now. The age of Aquarius. And as the water bearer pours out the water, know this knowledge will be poured out for all to consume and all religions will fade away. For this truth is self-evident within each temple and the service to self-oriented religions of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity will all end and be no more by the year 2050 as prophesied. There is only this truth that remains. Raise the oil within your temple following this process and sow the seed that will give you communication with God and understanding in all things. It will all make sense. Seek service to all or seek service to self. Both lead to the same outcome. Both are viable lessons, but one is fraught with more suffering and pain And we have suffered enough already. Let us choose to serve unconditional love in service to all. Final Notes 1. We do not support violence from either side, as no problem can be solved at the level of consciousness that it was created on. We must raise our consciousness through worldwide group meditation for world peace at a higher level of consciousness in order to solve these complex issues. 2. Israel now is a dead religion that was revived in the late 1800s and a dead language since 200 A.D. Most scholars now date the demise of Hebrew as a spoken language to the end of the Roman period, or about 200 A.D. It continued on as a literary language down to the Byzantine period from the 4th century A.D. But it was 70 A.D. when the Romans sacked Jerusalem and offered a pig in the Holy of Holies at Temple Mount before burning the second temple to the ground, destroying the temple complex, leaving only the western wall. The language and religion was dead, and it wasn't until after the state of Israel was established in 1948 that people flocked from all over the world. Many young adults learned Hebrew through the Young Nation's mandatory military service, though most 
families in Israel became Hebrew speakers over one to two generations and revived not only the dead language, but also the dead religion of Judaism that was not practiced since the second temple service. As the Hebrews went astray from keeping the Sabbath and temple worship, they stopped speaking the native tongues of Hebrew and blended with the native populations of other countries. It wasn't until just recently in the late 1800s that Hebrew was deciphered and a new Yiddish Hebrew language was created because some of the old words just could not be deciphered properly anymore. A good example in the Old Testament of Noah's speaking of gopher word would, we have no idea what that actually means. It's a good example of one of many words of Hebrew that even today we don't understand what they are due to this lapse of it being a dead religion and language for so long. This language and religion is a dead one that is being revived and is responsible for so many bloody conflicts. If you read the Old Testament, you will see clearly even more recent history has these same people responsible for starting the First World War of Jewish banking. Then the second, a continuation of the first with Jews moving the banking and influence into Russia and Eastern Europe in the form of the Bolshevik Revolution that was praised by China as the money encouraged the development of the Communist Party of China based on the success of the Bolshevik Revolution and the socialist ideas of Eastern Europe at that time. And are the same concepts funding and propagating Black Lives Matter, and and this whole whole woke movement that pits groups against groups, causing division until the nation falls, as a nation divided cannot stand. Then, after the fall of the government with the assassination of the king and queen there in Russia, they implemented a government. That government then murdered millions of people, called the USSR. So basically, all these people that were artists, that were scientists, that were intellectual people, had to be destroyed. And that leaves them with all the intelligence and everybody else is a dumbed-down society breeding. Then they implemented a government. Just look at the Russian and Chinese genocides. Millions and millions of people were murdered. Their own citizens who rose up and asked for these rights ended up being murdered and placed into a form of slavery we call communism. Three, The children of God are those that practice unconditional love and keep his commandments of peace and love to all in the order of respect for all life and an understanding of who you are truly. If you understand who you are, then you cannot sin anymore and have overcome all things. And that crown of salvation is waiting for you at the end of this race. For you will enter that promise of thy heritage called Israel. And will understand and know the true meaning of the Messiah, salvation, and raising your Christos to commune with God. You will understand the real meaning of the sealing of God's people, the Sabbath, and the true meaning of the virgin birth, the Christ seed and the birth from above that we all must experience in this being reborn and awake. These who achieve this are the sons of God and are called Israel and are of the promise. Not those committing genocide in a religious war to end Islam who call themselves Jews today. They are not real Jews. I am. Remember, Albert Pike referred to the Islamic faith as needing an enemy that would eliminate Islam and itself in the doing. And so, they rebirthed Judaism a dead language and religion and enemy of the 12 princes of Ishmael, the brother of Isaac, who raised the Islamic faith as predicted by Abraham's messenger. According to the Freemasons, this was planned a very long time ago to coincide with the age of Aquarius and entering that age, we enter the age of the destroyer. But more on that coming soon. The Christian faith, or New Testament, is the same prophecy or dream as the Old Testament. The New Testament raises the Christos within as the Old Testament used the holy anointing oil as well from within to birth a child in spirit the same way the modern Christianity is supposed to teach. But 
has failed to deliver the true religion of raising the Christ within and has in turn created an external Christ that misleads and confuses in this age of deception. Regardless, the faith of Judaism preceded Christianity as it was the forerunner teaching traditions from that of Atlantis and the original religion of this Christos process that we practice in raising the Christ oil even today. We prove our faith by confirmation in the process as it clearly works. Thank you for your time and listening to this critically important understanding I have channeled from raising the oil within my own temple. If you enjoy this information, then please like and subscribe. All are invited to participate in our Christ Oil Study Group. For more information on this group and how to join, please visit the link under this video's description. Again, much gratitude and love for you, my brothers and sisters in service to the infinite light and love of our universal creator.